is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. If David calls him Lord, how can he be David's son? They were like, <laughs> we, we were like, Nobody asked him any more questions after that. As Christians, it's kind of amazing for us to consider anyone questioning the authority of Jesus. As we listen to the teachers challenge him, are you holding on to anything in your life that you need to relinquish to the Lord's authority? Hello, and welcome to Plays on Word Radio, where we discuss, analyze, work, and play on the Word of God. Thank you for joining us on this excursion today. Let's join Pastor Teddy, also known as Fred David Kenny Jr., the founder of Plays on Word Theater, as he does a deep dive into the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Mr. Josh Taylor and Katie Kenny. My name is Fred David Kenny Jr. Welcome to Plays on Word Radio. That's right. We are broadcasting back from Plays on Word Studios at an undisclosed location. And um, we are back from our North Carolina tour. Man, we got back at 2 a.m. Oh, to make a long story short, we don't have a we don't have a plays on word van or trailer that we can stick all um the gear in and the merch because wherever we go people want mugs and and merchandise type stuff shirts we have CDs and we don't have a long distance vehicle we have a short uh, or shorter van that our dear brother Mark Case has loaned us graciously but we didn't feel that it would be right to take it all the way down to North Carolina. The farthest we took it was uh, D.C. area, and uh, that was pretty hairy. Uh, I, I don't. Did I tell you guys the story about the radiator cap? Okay, well, I'm going to mark that, and we will get back to that at some point. If I didn't tell you the radiator cap story, remind me to tell you that when we took Mark Case's full-size van down to D.C., all right? I don't remember if I... I'm, I'm kind of punchy right now because I'm functioning off of not too much sleep. And so, we had a very successful uh, North Carolina tour. We stayed at our southern base of operations, at the bunker, at Bill and Louise Cole's house. And we did a Pete play at Wilmington Bible Chapel which is in Wilmington North, Car- uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. It's down near the southern border up on the shore of North Carolina. Then the next day we did a Plays on Word sponsored event at the St. James Community Center, which was a, a terrific success. You know, both, both of those plays were just terrific success. We had um, a blessed period of time with a really good group of believers, We left out of there, some non-believers that showed up left out of there as believers. So, hey, that's the metrics right there. That's a metric I'm down with, you know? I'm not all about numbers in the seats, although we did have really, really good groups. I mean, big crowds. It was great. Um, But that's not, that's a deceptive metric. The real metric is where lives change for the kingdom of heaven. And we can say yes. So, we did the those two, and then... Uh, the next six days later, five days later, I don't remember exactly, but then we did another one in at the First Baptist Church of Leland in North Carolina. And these are all in a general vicinity, uh, w- within an hour of each other. And uh, we had a terrific time. I have to show you the photos. Some of the photos are really cool because they had this big, uh, this, it was a really big stage, and uh, there's a black background of nice grand piano. I don't know if it was a Yamaha or Steinway. I don't remember. But the piano was cool. And special shout out to my man Jay down there because he was holding not just the sound down, but he was doing lighting. They had two spotlights. And those of you that know me know that if we 
step up the level of theatrics or theater professionalism. It just brings everything to another level. So the spotlight, <laughs> when the lights were down, it was so cool because you guys know the scene where the, uh, the disciples are in the boat and Jesus calms the storm and the disciples. It the, the scene in the boat ends with, and we asked each other, who is this? He speaks to the wind and the waves and they obey him. Well, then... Pete gets up and the stage was the stage got dark. And I walked over to the piano in the dark. And then when he when Jay put the spotlight back on, I was all the way on the other side of the stage at the grand piano. Spotlight came up. And I was at the grand piano. And oh man, it was just so cool. I've been wanting to do that for many years now. I'm full budget, Pete. That's how we would do it. You know, wherever, whenever I go over to the piano. Stage goes dark, and next thing you know, the spotlight comes back up, and I'm at the piano. But being a mission and a ministry, we perform wherever we can. And the lights and all that kind of stuff is, is often not an option for us. Now, here the Mike Morgan bumper music kicking in here. So I, what I need to do is I need to get to the section of the Pete play... The performance clip, we call it. So you can hear the context instead of just the 30-second intro clip, which is what you heard in the intro. Yeah, so we're going to go to that section of the play in just a second. After that, I want to play something from our North Carolina. I tried to clean up the audio as best I can, but uh, so no complaint emails. All right. I'm going to play something special for you just to bring you guys up to speed on what the Lord's doing. But check out this clip. Tell us about faith. So when we got to the temple, when we got to the temple, the teachers of the law and the scribes, they were waiting for us. And as soon as we got there, the teachers of the law said, hey, what gives you the authority to do these things in here? And Jesus looked at them and he said, I'll ask you a question. You answer me, and I'll tell you by what authority I'm doing these things in here. John's baptism, was it of heaven or of man? Now, we could hear them. They conferenced with each other. They got together and they conferenced. We could hear them, though. They were like, if we say, if we say it was of heaven, he's going to ask us, why didn't we believe John? If we say of man, the people might stone us because the people, they thought John was some kind of prophet or something. So they took this one guy and they pushed him out. <laughs> we don't know. And Jesus looked at them and was like, well, neither will I tell you by what authority I'm doing these things in here then. And they couldn't believe it. They were like, we were like, <laughs> What? So then the, the, the Pharisees, they tried to trip him up. They figured they would, they would get him. So they said, um, yes, um, uh, good teacher. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Jesus saw right through them, completely through them. Hand me, hand me a denarius. Yeah. Whose image is on that? Whose inscription is on that? And they said, Caesar's and he said well then give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's they were like we were like <laughs> oh my goodness. so then the Sadducees they tried to they tried to trip him he shut them down he completely shut them down. Then a little bit later in the day, he said, I'll ask you a question. The Messiah, the Mashiach, the Christ, the Christos, whose son is he? And they all, almost in one voice, looked at him and like, David's. And so Jesus said to them, so how is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, said, the Lord said to my Lord, 
sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. If David calls him Lord, how can he be David's son? They were like, we, we were like, nobody asked him any more questions after that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So where, where do I start on this? The teachers of the law, the chief priests, this happens, this goes down when he entered the temple. These guys were waiting because you remember he overturned the tables the day before, overturned the tables uh, and made a whip out of cords, chased the people out of there. So this is Tuesday. Remember, Sunday was the triumphal entry where they yelled, Hosanna, Hosanna, meaning save now. And um, here comes the king. And they were cheering him. And he got the, he, they put him up on the donkey. And he, he rode in as the king from uh, Zechariah. You know what? Let me look at my paper, my Bible here. Zechariah 9, 9. I don't have my glasses on, but I'm going to try to read this. Um, and I don't know where they are right now, so please forgive me for that. Rejo Listen to this. This is from Zechariah. And this is whew, 515-ish before Christ was even born. Listen, listen to what Zechariah says. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Zechariah 9, 9. 500 and change years before Christ was even born, what happened on Palm Sunday, was predicted. And there are others. We can, we can go into that, but for the sake of time right now, we'll uh, just leave it at that. So these teachers of the law and chief priests and all these people with their degrees, they were waiting for them. And the first question they said, they said, what authority, what, what, you know, by what authority are you speaking? What gives you the authority to do these things in here? Meaning, like, turn over the tables, chase people out. <laughs> the amazing thing is they're challenging the Lord himself, the one that spoke and the universe leapt into existence. They're challenging him and questioning his authority. They also did the same thing to John the Baptist, too. They were like, you know, who are you? What, 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 you know, what, what college did you go to, man? What degrees do you have? And he was like, uh, you know, I'm the voice of one calling out in the wilderness, Make straight the path for the Lord. The, there's irony in this whole scene. And throughout the scriptures, there's, there's, there's irony. But this is, this is particularly amazing because these guys are challenging the boss, like the ultimate boss. They have no idea. But they do know, to a certain extent, they refuse to believe. Just like today, there are people that know that this is the truth and this is right, but they look for every excuse they could possibly imagine to say, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, uh, I know deep down in the deepest, darkest part of my being, I know that there's truth here somewhere, but I, I want to try to cop out somehow on, um, uh, well, what about the contradictions in the Bible? Or what about your doctrine? Or whatever it might be. The more things change, the more they stay the same. And so these people, they, they knew that something was going on. And you can tell by their answer. You could tell by their answer because Jesus immediately questions them. And remember, anytime Jesus asks a question, he's not doing it to get understanding or get knowledge in any kind of way. It's, it's always for the person that he's asking the question of or to. It's the person he's speaking to. And so he says, I'll ask you a question. Uh, you answer me, and then I'll tell you by what authority I'm doing these things. You got to remember, he said all you know, all authority had been given given to him in heaven, on earth, under the earth. He had all authority in the universe. He said, "I have authority to lay my life down and to take it up again." Whoa! 
So we're talking about the supreme authority. And it's interesting, just to completely, let's completely ADD as we're doing, we're completely off the rails. Well, not completely, but we're partially off the rails. Throughout the scripture, I'll give you a little homework assignment. Throughout the scripture, in the New Testament, it says the Father raised the Son, raised Jesus. Jesus talks about raising himself, and the Spirit is given credit for raising Jesus. Yeah, all three people that were present at the baptism of Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is a triune amount of credit given. Anyway, that's a, that's a little fun. You get a chance, go go dig up the, the passages. If not, uh, send me an email if you figure it out. But believe me, they're there. They are there, um, those passages. So, But he, he did say, you know, he had authority to do that as well, which is, if not true, if it's not true, then... He's, he's a liar. Obviously. Like if he made a statement that's untrue. So you got to deal with that statement. Like, man, wait a second. He said he had, he had authority to bring his life back. Whew. Oh my goodness, we're running out of time here. I'm a little off the rails. Please forgive me. I'm a little punchy. Uh, you know, this is the, uh, the more wild edition. But I want to share something with you guys, actually. We're, we're going to come back to these texts that we play, played for you from the clip, the performance clip. But I want to play something for you that we have been doing at our plays, particularly this year. Something that the Lord put on my heart uh, after my pop passed away, believe it or not. And I, for years... During all the plays, at the end of all the plays, I share the gospel. I share the gospel, and I say, listen, this is between you and God, and you just pray. You just ask him to you know, forgive you of your sins. You repent of your sins. You, you go to him and uh, ask him, you know, thank you for dying on the cross for me, Lord. Um, you know, and, and, but I, I left it there, and I felt like the Lord was saying, take it farther. Today's the day of salvation. Today's decision day. Don't wait. I would, you know, leave it in their hands. And that's where it really stays. But I believe he challenged me to really get this established today. Let's do it today. I've been so blessed because many people have been raising their hands, saying that they prayed that prayer to get right with the Lord and invite him in. Like the thief on the cross, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Salvation what that man on the cross got by turning to the Lord. If you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. So I just want to share, if I have time, take a listen. This is, this is from our St. James Pete play, but take a listen to this. Salvation. One drop of the 
blood of Christ Jesus is worth more than all the real estate in the creation itself. In the whole universe. One drop of his blood is worth more than that. And he shed his blood because he loves you. He loves us. He wants you to know him. Not just know about him. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's a difference. If you just know about him, it's not good enough. I know about what, forget who person is in the office, but just say the office of the president. Whoever, you know, in the president. I know, I know who the president is, but that doesn't mean I go to the White House and just walk in and have access. They'd be like, there's some crazy guy with a thing around his head and beard and everything talking to people. Secret Service, get him. I don't have access. But his, his children have a different form of access. They can go to him. And it is similar. I mean, knowing about the president, knowing about God is not good enough. You will not wake up in his presence. So before you walk out of his exercise, let me lead you in a prayer. If you want to be certain, this is between you and God, not me. I have nothing to do with this. You can even say, Lord, if that bad man is correct, that guy who's schizophrenic talking to all the crazy people by himself up on the stage, if he's right, Please forgive me if I said coming to my blood. You know, you, it can be something like that. It, it says, if you call in the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. If you reach out to him, he'll be found by you. You will find him. He's not trying to hide from anybody. He paid way too high a price to, for anybody to play games. All you need to do is with your heart come before him. So let me, let's bow our heads. Those who are in the family, you guys be in prayer. And if you're not sure, if you've never asked him to come into your life and forgive you, you just repeat this prayer in your heart. You don't even have to say it all. You say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I thank you for dying on the cross for me, Lord God. Please forgive me of my sins. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit. And live through me, Lord. Show me. I repent, Lord, and I seek you right now. Come to you right now. And while, while every head is bowed, all eyes closed, this is between you and God. But if, if, you, if you did, if you prayed that prayer for your heart, would you just raise your hand right now? I see you, God bless you. I see you, I see you, I see you. I see you, I see you, I see those, I see those hands. Yes, I see those hands. More importantly, God himself sees your heart. He sees your heart and he has invested way too much in you. To make it hard for you. He wants you to know him. And all heaven is breaking out into rejoicing right now. When one person turns. And turns towards the Lord. All heaven is breaking into, into hallelujah right now. And it's extremely happy. Amen. Amen. I, I, I did my best to clean up that audio. I apologize for you audiophiles out there that are having... You know, you're going into... Uh, a fit right now we will do our best to make sure we bring better quality audio to you but it was just important and that's been a repeat over and over and over these plays we've been doing where the lord said today is the day of salvation so if you were listening to that as a sideline viewer and and as a skeptic uh and maybe and you have never asked him I'm telling you, man, today is the day of salvation. You need to ask him to uh, forgive you of your sins. You turn from your sin. Ask him to come into your life. Um, fill you with his Holy Spirit. You know, thank him. For, you thank him for dying on the cross for you. You know, you get that. Ponder those things. Say, Lord, I want to be saved. Please help me. Don't let don't be a spectator on this. I'm telling you, eternity is way too long. Anyway, that's all the time we have for this episode. I promise we're gonna finish the text that was underlying that clip. But until we meet again, till next Friday, the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
This program was made possible by the Plays on Word family of supporters. To find out more, check out our website at playsonword.org.